Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the shuffle node. I've seen that a lot of people I've worked with have a hard time understanding exactly how it works and they use copy or other nodes to shuffle channels around. And I think that shuffle node is pretty useful and pretty clear to me. So I just wanted to make a quick video to explain it and see if it can help there. The way it works is fairly simple in my opinion. So the top line here is all the inputs, right? The inputs are going down this way and then the output are going to the right. So every manipulation of channel is going to go from the top and then turn around to the right. And when it turns, it when it meets a little cross, right? So here we can see that if we start from here, we go down red is here so it meets this cross and it's going to the right then until it's going to red same thing for green it's going to green the blue is going to blue etc so basically this one is not doing anything it's just putting the red in the red the blue in the blue and the green in the green etc etc additionally you also have these zero and ones here which if you want to have the red channel being entirely white then you can just click here and the result of this is that you're going to see the red channel being 100%. And if you click here, then your red channel will be black. Okay, so in order to demonstrate that a little better, I will do something quickly. First of all, the red is going to be only on the red, right? The green is going to be only on the green. This one is going to be blue, only in the blue. And again, I'm starting from a blank nuke so you guys can redo that at home. And alpha is going to be only in the alpha channel. So I probably forgot to remove alpha there and there and there. All right. So here you go. We have this weird image. But if we look at the channels here, if I'm picking only one at a time, like only red, right? It's the red. Only green is the green. Only blue and only alpha. All right. All makes sense. So again, red, green, blue, and alpha. So now, if I'm going to the shuffle node and I want, let's say, I want my red channel to be everywhere. So here, I would take the red and put it in the red. And then now in the green here, I would want a red again. So I was to go back and make sure that this flow here turns at the red, right? So it would go like this and then turn here. Same thing for the blue, I want it to be red. And then same thing for the alpha. I want it to be red. So here, here we go. Now I have red, green, blue, and alpha. All these channels, right, are containing what was in the red channel. Okay, so I hope it makes sense like this. The reason why you have another input here is that you could have another channel in here that comes in your in your graph here. Let's say we copy this and we put it into another channel, let's say motion. So we're gonna put motion in, in all of them, right? So motion is written in the motion channel now of this thing. So if I go to the motion channel, I'll see motion in all the channels of it. Now, the reason why you have uh, in the shuffle node, you have this other input is that you could decide that you wanted the, in the red, I want the red, in the green, I want the green, let's say. In the blue, I want the blue, but in the alpha, I would want uh, the motion pass. And where's the motion pass? Well, you can take it from here. You add another input, right? That is the motion. In alpha, I want the motion, any of the U and V, right? You can only put one, obviously. So now when he's gonna look for an alpha, it's gonna put it up there, right? So if we take a look at our node here and we look at the alpha channel again, we see that we have motion in here. See, I'm in alpha and we have motion in the alpha channel. Uh, and that's how I did that here. If I wanted to have motion in all the channels, RGB channel, then I would just do that. I would take all the motions, put it everywhere, and now they're on every channel. Again, this is the two inputs, and you can just play with these the way you want it. And again, the way it works is that this is the destination, and this is the source here. All the source and all the destination here. If in red, you want the green, then you're just going to go here and do that. If in green, you want the alpha, you're going to do this. If in blue, you want 100% white, then you do that. If in alpha, you want 100% black, then you're going to do that. All right. And the last thing is that this part here is doing the same thing that this part is doing, which is giving you another output in case you want to mix things up. So for example, let's say here we have a thing that has a red, green, blue, alpha and a motion pass. And let's say you want to invert that. You want to put everything in motion into the RGB and you want to put everything in RGB into the motion. So we'll do it this way put a new motion here, and then we want all the RGB to be in the motion, so this way. And then we want all the motion to go into the RGB. 
So then the result of this is that R, G, B, and A will be motion. But then if we were to go into the motion, then we would have red, green, blue, and alpha. Last thing, uh, pretty easy to understand. The other node that is very similar to shuffle is the shuffle copy. So it works exactly the same way, except that instead of getting all your input from one pipe, then you get two inputs. The one is the here and the two is here. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. So it's useful when you want to bring multiple channels from different part of your tree and you want to put it together into uh, one output. Once again, I hope this helps. If you have questions or you want me to explain other nodes or have a quick run on some nodes, put a message in the comments. Thanks.